Hi YouTubers, resellers, and thrifters. My name is Carrie, and my YouTube channel here is Be Carried Away. If you're new here, thank you so much for finding me. And if you're a regular subscriber, thank you so much for supporting my channel and coming back. So this is part two of a video called uh, Thrifted versus Thread Up, or Thread Up versus Thrifted. And I recently purchased two boxes of Thread Up bags, purses, that were um, not promised to be any particular name brand. And I wanted to see and do a comparison between these Thread Up bags and what I kind of typically get at my thrift store. So I know not everybody's into purses and handbags, but um, I'm gonna offer a few tips on selling them, looking for them, what to look for. And uh, if you just don't do handbags, I do have a lot of other videos. I do hard goods as well as clothing. So I'm a little bit of everything here and there. But in this particular video, I'm gonna focus specifically on handbags that I've thrifted and compare them to the previous video. So I'm back here in upstate New York and um, I was going to do this video in the same place I did the other one, which is at this little cottage that we're renting in New Jersey while Mike's uh, were doing his um, nurse practitioner job down there. And um, the stairs, there are 60 stairs down and 60 stairs up. And I've just decided that I'm not gonna be hauling things back and forth up and down the stairs. So where I thrifted the items or where I've sourced them, I'm gonna be doing the videos from there. Um, that said, I do have a little bit of personal news and that um, we're only gonna be staying at that cottage for another month. And we have rented an apartment and it's a big, beautiful, kind of brand new modern apartment. I've never really lived in a place like that in an apartment building. And there's tons of light and lots of counter space, big kind of bright white with wood floors and all of that. And so I'm gonna be able to do a lot of my videos from there. I won't have to use the ring light. So I won't have the um, kind of light in my glasses. It's a big space where I'll just have some natural light. So I'm really looking forward to getting in there and we're gonna be moving in um, the 31st of October. So, okay, let's get to these handbags. So these are bags that I've thrifted at a local Salvation Army, all from the same store, except for one bag. So I'm just gonna start right off. This is my favorite. So this is just absolutely gorgeous. Look at the leather. I mean, I think it even comes across on video how beautiful this quality of leather is. So I saw this hanging there. I didn't even see the brand yet and I just snapped it up. This was $9.99 at my thrift store. Now the thread up bags were all 16 and change. So I'm already ahead with this particular bag. Now the brand name, when I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, that's definitely a pickup. This is Fossil. Fossil is almost always a pickup for me. These are really good quality bags that you can find in thrift stores. Um, although they're high end in terms of quality, people do purchase them. You know, they're easily available at a variety of different places. They're not so high end that they're hard to come by necessarily. But this one is just a messenger style bag and it folds over. So it's kind of unique when you are carrying it with the carry strap, it folds over like this. It'll just kind of naturally hang like that. Or it can be carried more like a straight up tote. So in the other video, I used a couple of terms for different kinds of handbags, and I'm gonna put a link in the description box below on a site where you can go to look at what style of bag you have. If you're selling handbags, it really does help to put in the title the kind of bag you have. Is it a messenger bag? So this is um, sort of looks like a crossbody, but it's larger where you could put um, you know, paperwork and things like that hang over your shoulder, but it's more of a messenger bag, kind of like a newsboy, kind of paper boy sort of bag. So I'm gonna talk about maybe what style they are, but if you're unsure, sometimes you know they're crossovers. Some, some I have a couple here that are crossovers. They could be a crossbody, they could be a bucket bag, that sort of thing. But it does help um, to take a look at those resources that are out there for you on Google, on the internet, and have an actual style of bag. Some people, are only looking for that style of bag. It might not just be brand or color that they're looking for. They might be looking for a shoulder bag, a clutch, that sort of thing. Okay, my next thrifted bag is this really cute. Now this is a true crossbody. So the strap is 26 inches long and it is adjustable. This is by the brand BOC, which is by Born. Now Born um, is the higher end brand in this 
Uh, BOC is kind of the lower end of Born. This sure looks like leather, but it's not. This is faux leather, PVC, and you can tell, you can kind of feel it. It's a little more slippery, maybe. It's hard to tell just by looking, but inside there is a little tag and it will say, you know, 100% <clears throat> polyurethane vinyl or something like that. So you always want to look inside. Usually there are tags inside bags. Sometimes it's for the materials and sometimes it's to authenticate to make sure that you don't have a fake. That's one thing that's really difficult with high, real high-end bags is to be sure that you don't have a fake. And each particular brand is different. There's no real one guide just to how to know you have a real bag. You have to look up each brand and you, you know you can put into Google how to authenticate a coach bag, how to authenticate Dooney and Bork, that sort of thing, and you'll get some tips. Um, but if it's a real high-end brand like Louis Vuitton or something like that, you, it's really worth it to pay a service to have the bag authenticated. It's not expensive. Um, I just recently heard, and I don't, you can put this in the comments if you know this is true, but I just recently heard that Mercari will authenticate bags for $5, and if it turns out to be fake, you get your money back. Don't quote me on that because I literally just heard it from another YouTube channel. And um, if that's the case, that would be amazing, uh, both for the buyers and for the sellers. So <clears throat> this crossbody is PVC. I paid $6.99 for this bag, so way better than the $16. Um, there's some branding on the bottom. This is just absolutely brand new. Straps in great condition, all of the things that you want to look at, and for this color. So, this is definitely a pickup for me at that price and this brand. This I'll probably expect to get about $25 or $30 for this. Um, this one I have currently listed for in about $80 or so. Um, real leather, fossil, that's going to go for much more, and that style as well. Okay, next is the higher end version of that same brand. So, I found this Born bag. Now this one is real leather and this is not BOC by Born. this is actually Born. So there's the Born logo. These uh, are great handbags. They do shoes as well that sell really well for me. This has the charm or key tag or logo tag. Those are all words that you can use. This is a shoulder bag. So it does not have the crossbody. It has a great bottom. Taking photos of the bottoms of the bags is uh, really important. People want to see that, you know, has it been laid on the sidewalk, is it scuffed, you know, that sort of thing. So for $8.99, this is a fabulous pickup. So um, the inside is super clean. And look at this. It came with its little matching wallet wristlet. So if it has a little handle like this, this little wristlet with a zipper. So this two-piece set, I'm listing this for about 60. I'm hoping to get between 40 and $60 for this really great leather born bag. Okay, next. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that my thrifted bags are way better than my thread up bag. No suspense in that. And here's one of the reasons why. And here's another one of the reasons why. Now, this one I've had listed for a while. This I just sourced yesterday. And that's vintage. You know, you're not going to get vintage bags in a thread up bag. So vintage bags can sell really well and you can get them for a great price. This was actually half price yesterday. So I got this bag for $2. And whether it's at the thrift store or garage sales, you can get really good condition bags that have been kept really nicely. This is um, <clears throat> a fabric that's not really, a, that's embroidered. It's like a, a needlework carpet bag, I would call this. Um, a satchel with the two little handles. Uh, so this is not quite a shoulder bag because it's not going to fit over your shoulder, but this is, would be called a satchel, which is the handbag that you just hold by the strap like this. So gorgeous bag, two bucks. Thrifted is better to me. And then this one I've had listed for a while, but I wanted to show it because I thought it was a great example of a thrifted bag. And um, this has a little kiss lock. So if you have a bag like this that kind of twists off like that, that's known as a twist lock. And you definitely want to mention that because some people look for twist lock bags. They're kind of a hallmark of older vintage bags. And this one does have all of the markings inside to tell you, you know, where it's from and all of that. So this is Mamzelle, and this is kind of a well-known handbag brand. And this is Lambskin, just absolutely beautiful bag and I think I paid about $5.99 for this bag. Okay, 
Next, this reminds me a little bit of my Thread Up Rescue Box. A lot of the bags I got in that uh, video you saw were, you know, they needed some work. And that's always a questionable call for me because I do find enough inventory that I don't necessarily have to pick up items that need work. Now, this is an absolutely gorgeous Dooney and Bork authentic bag brand new this was never used and this bag I paid $9.99 for this bag look at the handle on this it's just absolutely gorgeous never used so this would be known as like a bucket bag or a shoulder bag it kind of is a little of both right it has the bucket sort of shape to it um could also almost be like a hobo so sometimes a hobo is the more slouchy kind of um not as formed this is not quite a hobo because it does have the um formed bottom there now this bag retails for 350 375 dollars so for 9.99 i picked it up even though it has a flaw and the flaw is that this um right here this latch is missing its latch part so it hooks in there to keep it closed but it's missing the piece to latch it tight. The good news was always check the insides of bags. A lot of times there are straps in there. There might be um, uh, authentication information. And in a case like this, there might be the piece that I need to fix that. So I'm gonna have to put a little bit of work into this. I don't think that this is something I can fix myself. I'll probably take this to a jeweler and have them fix it because it doesn't need to just latch it needs to be uh movable so that it can snap on and then hook and hold it and i want to be able to hold that latch tight it's the only closure on the bag so it is important to have it done well but for a bag that's really going to go for quite a bit of money i don't know exactly how much this will go for but i know what it retailed for and the price i bought it for even if i have to pay the jeweler ten dollars or so fifteen dollars i'm still going to only be into the bag for 25 dollars and I'll probably get upwards of 100 for it. So, you know, 85, 100. So it's worth it to me. And it's just in such beautiful condition. It's worth the save. So there's a thrifted rescue bag. Okay, next is a, ba um, a bag, but it's really a wallet. And so I believe Thread Up does send wallets and items in some of their um, other boxes, not in the one that I got. Sometimes you'll get like four, I think it's the coach. Maybe you'll get four coach bags and then one coach wallet or something like that. This is Joy and Iman and I paid $7.99 for this. This is real leather with beautiful gold hardware and I did say in the other video as well that it is good to list in your listing the, t the color of the hardware. Sometimes it's hard to tell in photos and I did pay $7.99 for that. It was pretty high at my thrift store for a wallet but I did comp these right in the store. If I'm gonna pay $7.99 for a wallet, I'm gonna comp it in the store. Even if I know Joy and Iman is probably a brand I wanna pick up, I wanna see how much it's going for. And I think this I could probably get about $39, 35 to $40 for this wallet. It's beautiful condition. Next, a brand new bag. So I do find brand new bags at the thrift store. Now this is vintage because this brand is Hobo. So this is one of the only brands that I got a hobo bag in my thread up box and I have a hobo bag that I picked up about a week and a half ago at my thrift store. Now, um, this is the older hobo logo and that's how I know that it's somewhat vintage, maybe 90s, 2000s, something like that, but it's never been used. It's got all of its um, protective paper, paper on there and plastic. And it's a really cute little shoulder bag with a gorgeous paisley, pastel interior and a navy blue leather and I'm not even sure if you can tell if you can tell that's blue in this photo in my lighting here but um great little bag I paid $7.99 for this which you know is paying up a little bit at my at my store but um for brand new this is just really adorable and obviously beautiful condition so um I'm probably going to ask about 30 to 35 to maybe 40 dollars for this cute little hobo bag next again my favorite brand so i have a little bit of footage of me finding this how perfect for this month of october one of my favorite months um not only because of halloween but because of fall and if you can tell by the keyhole patch there that this is another fossil bag and sure enough you open it up and gorgeous interior 
also yellow fabric interior. And there is the fossil logo in there. Just gorgeous condition, beautiful leather, and a crossbody bag. This one is not brand new. The only real signs of wear on this are there's a little bit of pilling on the back side, which is fabric. So there's the leather side here and the back side is fabric. So I'll probably just take my um, pilling tool and just sh razor shave that off and it'll be just like new. It's really gorgeous. And I paid $8.99 for this gorgeous leather pumpkin colored fossil bag. So I'm inserting a little footage of me finding that pumpkin bag as well as a couple of others. My thrift store, my Salvation Army, doesn't have a huge selection of bags, but when they're newly out, um, I do try to go through as many of them as I can, one by one, just, you know, looking at the quality and condition first, style second, and then brand. Um, and then I decide based on what they are pricing the bag at. I thought this was really pretty, and for $5.99, I did toss that in my bag, but I looked it up, I did comps, and it was not comping out um, very high at all. That brand is Max M-A-X-X, and I do sometimes pick it up, but I haven't done that well with it. Here I am finding the pumpkin fossil bag. I haven't even looked at the brand. I just know from the quality of the leather, the color, and the style that I'm going to throw it in there and then take a look at it. This is a little Tommy Hilfiger bag, and they only wanted $5.99. It was a really cute little bag, but again, that one just didn't comp out very high. And I generally try to go for a high average sales price, or ASP, with handbags. So, um, you know, I probably could have made a little bit of money on that Tommy Hilfiger, but it just wasn't something that I ended up purchasing. I have no idea what I'm doing with this. I don't know. I think I'm just, it was just this tiny little cute little tote. Maybe it's for a Build-A-Bear or a doll or something. I really didn't know what that was. This is a brand called Rossetti. Now, I do not pick up that brand. I see it all the time. I believe it might be a QVC brand. I'm not even sure. But um, I've come to those out a few times. They do have some cute styles, and it's just not something that I pick up. This was really pretty. The style, um, I put that in the bag, but there was no branding on that whatsoever, and I just didn't pick it up. Another Vera Bradley bag, they just wanted too much for that. That's the really nice microfiber blue, and if it had been a little bit less money, I would have picked that up. I thought I might leave it there and see if it goes on sale if nobody picks it up, but Vera Bradley generally goes pretty quickly in my store, so I will pay the full price for it most of the time. It's just something that you have to comp. It's very easy to comp Vera Bradley by taking a photo in the store and using Google Lens. It will tell you instantly almost the um, pattern and then you can decipher based on um, style and see if it's something that's worth picking up. I probably should have picked that one up, the tote bag, the duffel bag in that pattern. It was in pretty good condition. Um, condition is another thing with Vera Bradley. You know, they can get pretty beat up that um, cotton fabric. And so it's really something that I only pick up if it's in very, very good condition. There's a lot of it out there. So it's just not worth picking up pieces that are not in good condition. Again, some cute bags, but no branding on them. I don't pick them up if there's no branding at all. This is a favorite little section of mine. I think I've shown this in other sourcing videos before. I have found some great stuff buried under here in terms of wallets. Um, I found Coach in here. I found, found Tory Burch in there. Um, some great stuff. It just kind of can get buried in there. It's generally not priced very high. I go right past a couple of things that I later picked up. Look at that. Take a close look at that because I didn't take a close enough look at it when I was digging through this bag. I ended up coming back for a couple pieces, um, which I'll talk about in the video later. <laughs> but here's another one. I'm just, why didn't I look closer at that? I don't know. You know, that's, that's something that you know, when you're digging through lots of little things, it's very, very easy to miss to miss items. So you do want to go carefully through it. I later realized what it was, and it was a Kipling. They were little Kipling bags. They weren't asking very much for them, and I went back for them later. So again, I'm going through. I'm looking for not just 
brand, but I'm trying to see if this one is real leather. Uh, it wasn't, and I really couldn't tell. Sometimes the PVC can be really, really um, good faux, good faux leather. So there's me thrifting for some bags. So let's see which ones I picked up and um, go from there. Okay, next is a brand that I do really well with, and this is Vera Bradley. This is the microfiber quilted tote bag by Vera and gorgeous condition. This is the fuchsia color. It was new with tags at my thrift store and it still has its original price on there. This originally sold for $99. So I do well with Vera and with a brand new bag in this color, I'm probably gonna ask about $40 for this and I paid $12.99 for it. I do pick up the floral and the pattern Vera Bradley bags as well. They often don't bring quite as much money. This microfiber, um, these microfiber solid color bags, if they're in good condition, can bring quite a bit of money. And, um, you know, people just still love Vera Bradley. Okay, next are two identical bags in different colors that I definitely paid up for. These are in the case at my thrift store. And I paid $19.99 for these. So I paid $19.99 for these. So these are by Kipling. Now Kipling is a great brand. It has a nice following. They do a lot of nylon style bags like these. They do a lot of travel bags and they're kind of um, specifically designed for being on the go. So they have lots of great pockets, very ergonomically designed in terms of like, look at this really nice padded shoulder. Now this is what looks like basically your standard messenger style bag, but it also has inside the padded laptop holder. So that's really important to mention because a laptop bag is slightly different than a messenger bag in terms of having the technology, the padded, um, you know, padded holder so that your laptop or uh, tablet can be safe. So you wanna give the dimensions that it could hold, et cetera, et cetera. This is brand new. So this again was in my thrift store there's the there's the logo now Kipling logo can be a little bit hard to see and um, it's funny because I bought both of these bags and then I realized I had passed over a little nylon Kipling wallet in the wallet and pouch section and I went racing back there and I was like oh that's Kipling I just kind of didn't really notice the logo so I have the same exact bag in black that I also paid $19.99 for now these um, I'll, I'll double, a little bit more than double my money. I'll probably get about 50 to $60 for these. So paying up, you know, they're not super high, but they will sell. You know, Kipling's a solid brand. They're in brand new condition. So I, do I wish they were less than $19.99? Definitely. But are they still worth picking up? Absolutely. So keep your eye out for Kipling. And let's see, did I put the little, um, this one's also, a messenger bag. Oh, I thought I put the little um, wallet in here, but I guess I didn't. So it's not there, but I do have another one. Okay, and I got just a couple more. Here's another thing that wouldn't come in your thread up box, which is just some little, you know, little things, little kind of fillers that, you know, these are great. This is uh, by a brand called And Other Stories, which does have a little bit of a following. This was $1.99, brand new, kind of like a passport cover almost. And I think it probably is a passport cover with tropical birds and metallic on it. And then another little vintage, um, not a, it's a, just a, you know, a, per, a change purse kind of thing, a little bit bigger with this really pretty floral pattern. So my hands down, my thrifted bags win. I don't find some of the brands that I got in that uh, thread up box, like um, the Toomey and um, some of the other higher end brands, but with the work that's involved, you know, that's something that you have to think about and decide, you know, is it worth the chance to get some high end brands, even if you have to put a little work into it. So if you're not finding other handbags at your thrift stores and in good condition and you're doing a little work on them anyway, then the thread up box is probably a good buy. Um, for me, it's just not something I'm going to do again, at least not the rescue boxes. So I have one last bag and I didn't thrift this. This was uh, something I purchased on Poshmark. I had a $10 credit and I got this for $10 on Poshmark. This is um, Paoli Mossy. Let's see if you can see that. It's very, it's 
kind of impressed in the leather. I'm sorry if that's not showing. I sold a very similar bag in this orchid pattern um, previously. This is a really, really high-end brand, so I'm not sure if the seller didn't know exactly what they had or if they just wanted to get rid of it, but it's in beautiful, like new condition. And this is a bag that retailed for $600. It's an absolutely exquisite um, lambskin leather, gorgeous color, probably not something that might, maybe won't sell until the spring. It's kind of a real springy lime green color, which is one of my favorites. And I just, when I saw this and I realized I had a credit, I'm like, I have to pick that up. So it's Paoli Mossi. It's an Italian company and this is Italian leather. So, you know, browsing around on eBay and Poshmark, Mercari, you might find bags that are maybe underpriced or um, just look at bags and figure out, you know, brands that sell and that sort of thing when you're doing your research. If you come across one that for $10 um, plus shipping, it was absolutely worth a pickup and I'll make a profit on this if I don't use it myself a little bit prior to. So that's the end of the video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. I'm having a lot of fun making the videos and I'm looking forward to the fourth quarter making quite a bit more and being in that new space, not having to use the ring light quite as much and um, getting some better videos out there. So thank you guys again and happy thrifting everybody.